justified. It's so much legal, legitimate things that we could do if we, like, you know, completely abstain from all this criminal activity and shit. And the, the reason that I still I identify with the name of doing good is because I want them to see that if we can do good, you understand what I'm saying? Why won't you attribute that to him like you attribute the negative? That's you understand a whole what I'm saying? Fact. If we can... If, if we can change, why won't you take into consideration that he can change? Me and the notification gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. BBN, Jack Frost. What's up, party people? All right, so today we're sitting here with... OG Hollywood from Sex, Money, Murder, Soundview. You heard me? All right, what's up today, my brother? I hope everything's good with you. All is well, beloved. All is well. Copy. All right, so um, real quick, before we even really go into the logistics of what's going on with... Um, with, with 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 the individual with with what's going on with the culture at the moment, I would like to ask you: How did you personally get involved in 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 uh, I'm gonna say gang life? I mean, from my perspective, man, you don't even realize when you get involved with it because I wasn't one of those individuals who, who set out to join the gang. You know what I mean? A lot of people, like, set their intentions to join the gang. They see the Bloods or the Crips faction in the area, and they want to be a part of it, and they, you know, set out to join that. That's kind of, like, not what happened to me, man. It was more so of just, you know, your childhood friends, your friends from school. As you get older and, you know, being from a, a poverty-stricken environment and a lot of us having uh, a lack of positive male influence in our homes and things of that nature, like, we gravitated towards the street and towards crime together at the same age, you know, being that, you know, we're all in the same age group. So that group, like, began to become identified as a gang. You understand what I'm saying? The, the original sex, money, murder before, you know, uh, they became bloods or whatever, it, that, that crew was just like a bunch of friends who knew each other from childhood and grew up together and began, you know, doing whatever it was we were doing together. All right, so, so just so everybody can understand, Sex, Money, Murder, uh, this is Bronx, right? Absolutely, it's the Bronx. It's the Soundview, Castle Hill section of the Bronx. Uh, just also, could you tell us how the Bronx was in the 80s, in the 70s, 70s and 80s? Could you could, kind of like break it down to us so people can understand exactly what kind of climate it was? Okay, like, I mean, for the 70s, though, you're talking I was a kid, I was a child in the 70s. Well, you know, in the 80s. But, like I, well, more the eighties was my street. But I can remember some of the seventies. You know, what I mean, when you're speaking of the Bronx and gang culture, I can remember like you know, what Vietnam Project is in the Bronx. I watched them build them. Okay, oh, wow. my grandfather, he's dead. Yeah, he used to own a building on Park Avenue between uh, what is it, uh, 59th and 58th or something like that. That over there, like off 161st. Copy. That building is knocked down. It's like a little garden there or something they're growing now. But it was a building that my grandfather used to own. His name was William Latz in Recipes. And I watched him build Vietnam projects, but I could recall being a kid and going outside and up and down the street or whatever, and they used to tell us not to go down Sir Street because the gangs were living in abandoned buildings back then. This one was like cobblestone streets over there. It was cobblestone streets up and down through there back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, you would see the gangs, the old school 70s gangs of the Bronx, you know, coming through with the, the jean jackets with the sleeve cut open to get the chains on their belt and the gang. That shit was real. They used to come through in packs of like 25, 30 in the Bronx in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I used to see them as a little kid. Like, so I, I recall that clearly. Like, I, I still hold on to that memory seeing gangs and being warned as a child. Like, y'all play over there. Don't go play over there. Like, the gang in that building over there. It was abandoned buildings everywhere. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I, I remember that. But like the 80s was more, see, I, I left New York. At a point in time, during the 80s, I got in trouble in school. You know, my mom sent me down south with my pops. And that was the early 80s. So when I came back, it was like 88. Now it's like, you know, 
it's the crack era, and you know it, it's lit everywhere. It, it was popping. Everybody was trying to get money, but I, I was still young. I'm like 14, going on 15 or something. So I'm getting my feet wet, but not doing nothing major. But you know, I, I linked back up with my old friends or whatever, and, and it was the same, same thing. Like everybody was on the same type of time, but we were just watching everybody that was out there. But we're so ill, right? What was so ill about Pete? As a young kid, we talk all about the Pistol Pete here. We talk about the real Pistol Pete, P Copy. Peter Pistol Pete Rollout or Soundview. You know what I mean? Copy. Uh, what 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 made it? What was so ill about hanging out with him? Right, we young kids. You were here of all these famous gangsters back in the days, big time drug dealers and shit like that. You know the legends, names, long bells from borough to borough to borough, and like we would go places. These niggas knew Pete. That was ill, like, everybody knew, like, all the major, major niggas knew Pete. He was 14, 15 years old. We didn't know them niggas, we heard their name, but they knew who Pete was. And it's like, Pete was respected in the street on the strength of his pops. Like, he was wise beyond his years in the street on, on, on the strength of his pops, man. That it, it was ill, like, moving with that kid. He didn't think like the rest of the kids our age. All right, so, um, the, so when y'all first uh, started clicking up, when y'all who are the, you said your friends, who who are some of the names that you could like call off just you know just to let everybody know who you talking about. Right, uh, one of my best friends is the one I, I argue with the most. Um, Nut Sean Carl, we was in like elementary school together. You know what I'm saying? The PS 107. You know what I mean? Um, my own boy Bill that died, Andre Brown. Like we was real tight. You know, it, it, it was it was a few of us that were there in the beginning, like before the name Sex Money Murder came about. You know what I mean? We, we went by a different name before that. You know, but those just a couple that come up with Bimo. Uh, yeah, he was another one that was around. He was from Castle Hill, but his father was from Soundview, so he was always in both projects a, a lot. You know, so those are some of the names that people will remember now that were around back then. There was a few more. All right, so uh, let's get right to it. Obviously, we're here. We want to discuss uh, Pete, Pistol Pete, obviously. Um, so first, real quick, so somebody, so everybody can understand, what is he going through right now as far as uh, the, the prison system is concerned? I mean, from what I know, man, he was sentenced to some extreme condition. You know, they were really harsh in terms of, like, basically solitary confinement for the rest of his life, you know? Wow. And, um very limited people who he could, you know, correspond with and, and things of that nature, like not being in population around people, you know, being 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 isolated, confined to itself, pretty much because the, the government felt as though, you know, he was a threat from prison. He had the ability to encourage others to do negative things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So right now I'm in a position like where, where my whole campaign is, I was real close to Pete. I know Pete, and I know how I've matured and how I've changed in my thinking from when I was 18, 21, 20, shit like that. You know, I know I've changed. We mature. So I know I've matured tremendously. And I know that he has, too, because, like I said, he was always advanced in his thinking. So I know that he's matured tremendously. But, like, they won't cut him a break, primarily based upon what people who identify themselves with sex, money, and murder are doing out here. You know what I mean? They feel like they're doing all this evil in his name. So it's like my, my whole premise right now is I'm not a criminal anymore. You know, I, I did 11 years in prison. I came home. I haven't reoffended. I've worked, paid my taxes every year, stayed out of trouble, kept my nose clean. I'm, I'm on some whole different shit. And I want people to be able to identify that as what gangster is. You understand what I'm saying? as opposed to the guy who comes home and keeps doing the same stupid shit and doesn't wake up, doesn't learn, doesn't advance, just thinking. You know, and if I could get people to catch on to that wave and and realize that there's so much we can do constructive just by being unified. There's so much legal, legitimate things that we could do if we, like, you know, completely abstain from all this criminal activity and shit. And the, the reason that I still... I, identify with the name of doing good is because I want them to see that if we can do good, you understand what I'm saying? Why won't you attribute that to him like you attribute the negative? 
That's you a whole fact. If we, can, if, if we can change, why won't you take into consideration that he can change? And, of course, I, I would want for his freedom, but if for nothing more, allow him to be released from those conditions. You understand what I'm saying? Into a, some type of normalcy where, okay. he could, where he could be around people, man. Okay, let me ask you a quick question. How long has he had this isolation thing been going on, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, it's had to be going on for at least about 17 years, something like that. So he's been in complete years. isolation for about 17 years? Uh, if not more. I uh, could uh, be wrong with my time. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, his trial was around like so, uh, the end of 99, first week of January, somewhere in that era, because I wanted to attend his trial. But I was on Rikers Island at the time fighting the case. So that's why I know it was somewhere in that area when I was locked up, his trial had begun. Okay, so in America we have this thing, and this is I'm I'm gonna bring this up, and I'm not trying to um, I'm not trying to demonize uh, the judicial system, and I'm also not trying to uh, legitimize illegal activity. But what I will say is, in America we have this thing that you're not supposed to uh, give anybody any cruel or unusual punishment, and I want to know has there been any lawyers that have been you know probably put into place to fight this isolation, because that sounds to me like that could be possibly considered as cruel and unusable punishment. Okay, so from what I understand, and mind you, you know, um, there are people, you know, like, like his family, who would know better than me, who are, have been able to communicate with him closer than I have. You know what I mean? So a lot of my information, at this point, when it comes to it, it's second party information. Copy. So I'm going to clarify that, you know. But uh, for for one, that would happen when uh, I believe that they did go that process, and what stopped them was criminal activity that was still being committed: sex, money, murder, pistol, P. It was still indictments going on at the time of them trying to, you know, what I'm saying, get him out of that. And it played negatively in the decision that was made on him. Okay, so basically what you're saying is is that due to activities of individuals that allegedly, allegedly, got, because this is what I'm going to assume that the uh, government is saying, that individuals had received orders from him, that's why he's in isolation, and yes, they're trying at one to, point in time, they did, they and, did charge him. And they're trying they to charge. attribute any type of behavior that any individuals might be doing to they're doing it at the behest of Pistol Pete. So, therefore, they're trying well, to put if, him in isolation. If not his direct orders, his influence, you understand when you use no, the no, word no, demonized, it. he has totally been demonized in the eyes of the United States government. So, you know, they want him just kept away from everybody. And me just feeling like someone who's known him since childhood, for one, whatever crimes he was charged with, convicted with, I wasn't with him on the day those happened. I can't speak on those. Okay. There's not my, 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 you know what I'm saying? My, 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 anything to speak on. I don't have a right to speak on those days. I wasn't there those days. I don't know anything about those days, you know? But what I know now is that he is not the same person he was at 19 and 20, 20. Obviously, obviously, no one is the same person that they were uh, when it was nineteen and twenty. When they when they get to whatever age he's at now, which I'm gonna assume is in his early fifties. It, it doesn't minimize the things that he was accused of, the things that they allegedly found him guilty of, whatever the case may be. It doesn't minimize that. I know people would like these arguing with those other people can't get this person back. Well, we understand that, but these prisons are filled with people who have been charged with, with, with crimes like so, and are, they are in population. Well, to be honest with you, there was just a uh, a lady down in Texas who murdered somebody in their own home and got only 10 years. So, Absolutely. So we also, the argument it sounds like to me is that the law should be the same for everybody. There shouldn't be a particular group of people or set of people that the laws are going to treat more harsh than they will another individual that's committing the same crimes because they belong to a different demographic. Is that um, something that you're trying to say? Um, it's like I'm not even trying to argue 
that point, I mean, those are factual things that we know they exist. You understand? I, I'm not even trying to argue that point, man. It's like, to, to me, it, it would be moot arguing that at this point because it's so obvious. You know, when things are that apparent and obvious, it, 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 it makes no sense to even argue. Like, you know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got, I can't tell you what you're doing. Have you tell me that ain't what you're doing? We all know what you're doing. You understand? But it, it's just like, my thing is, I can't do for him what I would like to do for him financially. Copy. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a thing where a lot of people feel as though, you know, if you're not doing nothing for him, you shouldn't be saying anything about him or saying his name or anything to that extent. You know, well, there is more that you can do besides throw money at a situation. This is a fact. You know, especially when you don't have it to throw. Because, like I said, I'm no longer involved in anything from him. I live in South Carolina now. I don't live in the Bronx no more. Minimum wage in South Carolina is seven twenty five. I mean, that's not what I make, but just, no, I you get, know, when I you do it. the math, it's like, you don't make a lot of money in South Carolina. A good job down here is, is like $15. In New York, that's like the bare minimum. That's a fact. That's a whole fact. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, I can't afford to take care of him in prison. I can't afford to pay for lawyers for him. So what can I do? If I have a passion, if I do care about him, if I do still hold on and have a, you know, an honor to our friendship, because our friendship wasn't just about no crime. You understand? We were childhood friends. We played video games together. We, we participated in every basketball tournament in the neighborhood together, from Kids Bay Boys Club, Castle Hill Pathways for you, Academy Guard. We were the, the backcourt on every team we played for. He played the point, I played the shoot. We have a, a history that has nothing to do with crime. You understand what I'm saying? So my want and need for people to back off of doing negative things associated his name. with his name is different than other people's feelings. You understand? So every, everybody that's going to pee up to my sheet, I'm going to bust my guns to pee. Everybody is saying, you don't realize what the fuck you doing. You bust your guns to pee, man. They ain't never trying to let this nigga out the fucking box to keep busting your guns. Your pee ain't got shit to do with you busting your guns. People don't even know you. Mm. But Pete with the jail, you was a fucking pampers. Mm. This is a man with a family. You understand what I'm saying? No, I get you. And they feel a certain type of way about certain shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, they feel a certain type of way about people using his name or trying to benefit off his name or make money off his name Well, well while he's going through this suffering. Well, to be honest with you, it's hard to fight for somebody and try to help somebody get liberated from a, especially from the situation that you're talking about, because I, I wanted to just make this clear. That's why I said a couple of things earlier that he is in complete isolation. And the reason why they have him in complete isolation is because they fear, at least their, their excuse, the government's excuses is that they fear the type of power that he wields in prison and how he could affect the outside world. Correct. Absolutely. So and they fear that he will do that for the negative. Exactly. So, my whole point is, is that, well, your point is, is that you would like for them to at least allow for him to have uh, the basic essentials. And one of those would be other human contact where he could be able to at least play cards with other people or chess or whatever, you know, at least your time. Absolutely, like, you know, write who you want to write and get letters from who you want to get letters from. Like everybody, like treat like everybody else has got to be in there for the rest of their life. And you're also not, saying... Not the zero point whatever percentile that that's under those conditions. And you know, I, got, I, I, got, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, 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 got, you go. Other, you know, homeboys who came up with us too, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and they get to, to text you all the time and call you all the time when they need to call you. You know what I'm saying? You're all fucked up, man. I ain't got no food in my locker. And, you know, he can't do that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you can't even send them nothing. You got to have some $1,500 in your pocket. You can't even throw it to the view. You gotta go through so many channels and try to get to it. It's thinking impossible. So basically, you need people, or uh, it would be helpful to uh, Pistol Pete if people stop chanting his name in a, in and um, synonymously with violence. With violence, with criminal activity, man, with all type of illegal shit, man, tying his name and that entity to it. I'm tying that name and that entity to a righteous movement, man. I don't want nobody in my circle that's not doing shit the right way, bro. That's you know a whole fact. Like, 
that, that's what I said, nigga can't come around me with a with a with a fucking gun. You got your PWP and shit legit. Uh, all right, cool. You understand what I'm saying? Like I don't even want to be around you if you not. You understand what I'm saying? Like on top of your shit, bro. Everybody got a job or own a business or doing something legitimate and can verify where they get their bread from. Nobody's out here doing this knucklehead shit no more. That's a whole fact. And also, uh, just uh, add it to We're trying to weed those out that are. You feel them? Those that we come in contact with that say they are of us, man, if you moving like that, you right. And also, just to add, and also just to add something to what you're saying, if uh, somebody was to do more, if if you know people who consider themselves part of your organization and people who consider themselves uh, friends of uh, Pistol Pete that want to see good done by him, these same individuals that's out there making rap songs and yelling his name, um, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm not trying, <laughs> I'm not trying to demonize anybody. But if these same individuals would maybe, you know, get basketball tournaments or something in the neighborhoods going and then attaching his name to it, that might actually be beneficial. It could, as long as they keep it clean, man. Yeah, like, no, no, no. got to be clean from top to bottom. Do it with clean money. You feel what I'm saying? Like, if they, because they fuck around looking, okay, well, who's paying for this? Who bought the church with the money? Everything got to be right, man. Like, real right. We use the terminology real right, but niggas be half crooked. <laughs> no, that's a whole fact, though. Um, Just so uh, people could get a little bit a better understanding because I, I, I myself, I think that uh, often we get lost and, and we can't associate the difference between people who have done wrong and people who, if they had the opportunity, wouldn't continue to do wrong. You understand what I'm saying? I think often we get, we get lost and we try to, we try to hold both of those two, those two differing, uh, pillars, those two different, very, very different uh, state of minds as the same. Like, sometimes people have done things when they were young in their life, and as they get older and they gain uh, knowledge of self, and, and and they might do different. So, you, what I'm getting from you is, is that whatever fears you believe that the government might have had that had them to do, you know, take these really, really strenuous you know, going out of their way to, to make it, to prevent him from having any kind of contact with the outside world, you, per se, don't believe that it's currently necessary. And I, I don't believe it's necessary. I don't. You understand what I'm saying? And I also believe in um, leading by example. That's and I also believe in showing and proving. That's a fact. You feel what I'm saying? And like I said, it's like, like Pete, I, I'm a thinker. You understand? When I was away for those 11 years, what hurt me the most, it, it, I knew I was worth money, but not in there. You understand what I'm saying? I, I knew I, I had I had power, but but not in there. Like I, I don't I don't out of line. I don't like uh, uh you know entertain prison power. To me, that you know like to some people, you know that that's the world. To me, that that's not not real power. Like you know what I'm saying? That's a situation that I'm looking to get out of. Like I don't care about prison power. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So I wanted to just get out of there and put myself in a situation where I would never go back. You know, and I didn't come home to no no bunch of money and all that other crazy shit. If I had any money, it was used fighting my case and then and shit like that. And I didn't have no fucking money like that, you know. So I came home to the job I'm at now, I started at the bottom, man. On the ground in the lumberyard lifting fucking wood. And worked my way up to a supervisor. I don't lift wood no more. Mm. I supervise people now, you know what I mean? But I applied the same mentality that I had on the corner to the job. You understand what I'm saying? Like, we starting off with this little ass pack, but I got a kilo on my mind. Got you feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what everybody else thinking about. You feel what I'm saying? I, I'm thinking about some different shit. And, and, and I got that thinking from, from my mother. You feel what I'm saying? So it, it's like, I'm thinking... I want to start a movement, man, of people doing righteous shit, man, doing this shit in this name, man, you know, and, and just show that it can be done, that he can't have a positive influence. He had a positive influence on me. I don't want to be in that situation. I look at him as an example. You understand? I don't want to be in that situation, so I don't want to do that shit. I want people to understand, man, that's not a cool spot to be in. Prison is not cool. It's nothing cool about it. It's not, it's not gangster, man, like, 
you you leaving so many responsibilities that you're not attending to. So it's like you almost like a su- you like a sucker, bro. You're not taking care of shit that you're supposed to take care of while you're in there. Not in the present. No, you're not. So it's like, I think we could change this shit, man. I think we could change the idea they have. I think we could change the perception. It's going to take work. It's going to take real men and real leaders to step forward and lead by example, man. That's very well said, and I agree with you. Um, is there anything you want to go out? Is there anything that you want to go out with? Oh, man, I want to plug this joint I got coming out, man. I got this joint coming out, man, next month, man, a big joint on Info Minds with For the Culture, man. Please check that out for me, bro. We're trying to do something big with that, man. If they on board with this movement I got, man, you know, that that, that really just tells more about the history because, man, you talked a lot about the present, man. A lot of people want to know about the past, the present, and the future, man. So it, it, it's, it's there, man. It's there, man. But the future's more important than the past. But you won't know where you're going if you don't know your past. That's a whole fact. You already know, though. If, if um, We're going to cut this interview right here real short. But, you know, you could come on any other time. Or you gotta, all you got to do is hit me. Absolutely, man. That's not a problem, man. Same goes both ways, man. You hit me, man, whenever you want to holler at me. That's what it is, my brother. I really do appreciate you for coming into the show. No problem. Appreciate you. We out. All right. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember, positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.